Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.2. We're going to introduce prime numbers. But before we introduce prime numbers, we're going to recall a factor evenly divides a number. And what we mean by that is essentially terminology. We have to recall what a factor is. A factor is a number times another number. If it evenly divides into a number, it is a factor of that number. So let's look at an example. If I have 6, well, 6 equals 2 times 3, which means these are the factors. Either one of these would evenly divide into 6. But what about numbers that can't be evenly divided by anything? Well, those are defined as our prime numbers. And it's in your best interest to maybe memorize your prime numbers up to uh, you know, at least the first half of the 100s, I guess, up to, let's say, 50. 3, OK, 47, 53. Those are both prime numbers. So we'll want to commit those to memory, or at least be familiar with them. So prime numbers are only divisible by one of themselves. And this is a list of some of them. Composite numbers are numbers that are greater than 1, but are not prime. So it's not going to be in this list, but they must be greater than 1. One thing we have to note is 1 is neither a prime number or a composite number. And just to go a little further, composite numbers means they have multiples, which means a number times a number will give us a composite number. Now, I just mentioned the term multiples. Sometimes it might be beneficial if we list multiples. So if I want to list the multiples of 13, one of the prime numbers, so that maybe when I see that number, I'll recognize, hey, that's a multiple of 13. So 13 times 1 is just 13. Times 2 is 26. So I'm just going to list the multiples. Times 3 is 39. Times 4 is going to be 52. And we could continue that list, but we're just listing the multiples. So when I see the number 39, I'm not going to think that it's a prime number, I'm going to realize, hey, that's a composite number of 13 times 3. Or we could use our divisibility rules. This one's divisible by 2. This one's divisible by 3 because the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. And we talked about that in the previous section. All right, let's list some multiples of 19. Well, this is 19. 19 twice would be 38. 19 three times, well, we could just add another 19 to that is going to be 57. And if we want to multiply that uh, by 4, as we list the multiples here, we would have, uh, let's see, 76. So sometimes it might be beneficial to list these numbers. If I saw the number 57, initially I might think, hey, that might be prime. Well, we find out that it's actually 3 times 19, a larger prime number. And we could do the same for 23. I'll let you write the multiples of 23. Do this one up to 5. All right, so let's look at a question we have here. The question is, are these prime? So we have a series of numbers. We're going to determine if they're prime. Well, the way we do that is we use our divisibility rules. If our divisibility rules fail, then maybe we have a prime number. So we're going to check the other prime numbers, maybe actually by doing division to see if that works. So if we look at 164, we say, OK, is this a prime number? Well, is it divisible by any other number? Well, I look at this, and I think about my divisibility rules, and I say, hey, this is a 4. 4 is an even number. This number is divisible by 2. So no, this is not prime. If we look at this number here, well, is this number prime? 143, that's a relatively large number. And if I look at it, I say, well, it's not divisible by 2, which means it's not divisible by 4 or 6 or 8 or any even number. If it's not an even number, it's not divisible by 2. So that eliminates a lot of the possibilities. Well, what about 3? Well, if we test that divisibility, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 3 is 8. 8 is not divisible by 3. This number is not divisible by 3. What if we tested uh, 5? Well, it doesn't end in 0 or 5. So maybe we want to try 7. Well, 7's divisibility rule is a little bit more complex. It's actually easier to try it if, if I just do the division. 7 goes into 14 twice with no remainder. 
7 does not go into 3. So this is not divisible by 7. What about, uh, let's say, well, it wasn't divisible by 3, so it's not divisible by 9. Uh, what about 11? If you recall, in the previous video, I did introduce the divisibility rule of 11. If I subtract every other digit when I put them together, it should sum to 0. So 1 minus 4 plus 3. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So if I sum that up, it equals 0. This is divisible by 11. So it is not a prime number. Let's look at this one here, 113. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of jump ahead. This is a prime number. And you've seen how much time it took. We actually checked all the multiples up through 11 before we found that this was a composite number. So if it's not prime, it is composite. It's either one or the other, unless it's 1. And we really don't consider 1 too often. But 113, it is prime. But how do I prove that? How do I show that that's a prime number? Well, I could go through those divisibility rules, and that can be somewhat tiresome. Uh, and because there's lots of prime numbers, as we had just seen, one thing we can do is find the nearest perfect square. And in chapter 1, we had talked about perfect squares when we introduced exponents. So hopefully, you took the time to memorize your perfect squares at least up to 13. Now, the nearest perfect square to this is 11 times 11. 11 times 11 is 121. This is the closest prime number to this number. That's a perfect square. So what we want to do is only have to test the values that are less than this uh, perfect square, which was 11. So is this divisible by 11? Let's start right there. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 plus 3 is not equal to 0. So this is not divisible by 11. It's not divisible by 10 because it doesn't end in a 0. It's not divisible by 9 because this does not sum to something divisible by 9. It would be 3, 4, 5. 5 is not divisible by 9. We could also look at uh, 8. Well, it's not an even number, so it's not going to be divisible by 8 or 6 or 4 or 2. So we eliminated those. It's not divisible by 5. So this actually turns out to be a prime number. This is prime. The last two we've seen were composite because they weren't prime. This one is prime because it's not divisible by anything besides 1 in itself. Why don't you try 169? And the hint there is know that perfect square. And try this one yourself as well. You could try it at this time. But we're going to do one more example. And I look at this number, and I immediately know that this is not a prime number. And it's because I know my divisibility rules. I see it ends in a 5. It's divisible by 5. So this is not prime. As you work through the homework and you're asked to find prime numbers, you're going to see that it's not very often that you actually do find a prime number. There are more composite numbers than there are prime. So Try these two on your own. Do enough of them. Do your homework until you feel confident with finding prime numbers. Thank you for watching.